and welcome to The Wreath Shop. I'm Julie Samako with Southern Charm Wreaths, where we make beautiful wreaths and teach you how to make and sell them. So today I want to show you um, some examples, some things that I've been working on. <clears throat> I need to make 10 of these for my windowsill on my house. And so I thought I'd just come on Facebook Live and kind of let you guys um, in on how I make these. So these are going to sit on my windowsill on the front. Um, and I've got a little wire, I mean a piece of ribbon that I just shut the window down on top of and then that will hold it into place. So um, these will look really pretty. Did you guys see my wreath? I know I posted it in Facebook. The wreath that I made for my own door with the, well, all the magnolia and the um, grapevine balls and stuff. So um, it had all the berries and um, magnolia leaves is what it had. So um, if you, as you come in, <clears throat> comment below and tell me where you're from and what are you doing today. I've, um, I'm going to try to update my iPad so that I can see the comments coming in from across the room. Okay. Good evening, Miranda. So everybody can hear me okay? And maybe, Christina, if you would do me a, a favor and share it in the Learn Deco Mesh Wreath group, that would be a huge favor for me. That would be a huge favor. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late, you guys. I've had one of those days, one of those days. Hi, Amanda. Yay, it's working. Yay, I'm glad. So you guys can hear me okay. It looks like you can see the workstation. And I'm just going to get started. Um, let's see. So this is, uh, let me measure. I'm thinking it's like 30 inches. So this is a 30 inch uh, swag. And it is not a teardrop swag. It is solid on one piece, okay? And I've used these over a couple of years now, so now I'm just repurposing it. So this is a 30 inch uh, swag that is an evergreen base. Oh my gosh, the doggies are going crazy. Somebody must be here. And the first thing I'm going to do is um, put the ribbon in, actually. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I miscalculated the ribbon and I didn't purchase enough, so now I'm thinking, where is my other roll of ribbon? There it is, right in front of me. Um, so the re that's why I'm not like doing a bow. I'm just going to do one solid, let me get this one out of the way. This is my example. I'll put it up here. So this is, um, I'm gonna just do one solid line of ribbon, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be about a yard. So I just lay it down on there, and I'm going to pinch it. I guess it's about six inches, and I'm going to pinch it and um, twist it into the garland, just like that. And I already know where the center is, where I did. I did know where the center was. And uh, so that's where I want the indention of one of my loops to go. So I'm gonna place that down on the center and twist that in. Hi, Tanya, welcome. Oh, thank you, Christina, thanks so much. Hi, Jan. Welcome, you guys, welcome. And so, um, just gonna push that down a little bit more. I'm trying to stay within a yard of the ribbon because I don't wanna run out. And then I'm gonna twist it into the twist ties on this end, and then cut it off. So just like this. So it's almost like, um, I don't know, an inchworm or whatever, but it's just one line going down of attaching it, and then the center is right here, okay? So once I have that, I'm going to cut a V on the end of the ribbon. So um, another term is called dovetail. Just fold the ribbon in half 
and then cut on an angle. Hi, Tammy, welcome. Hi, Gladys. Welcome you, welcome ladies, welcome. And then here are, okay, these are my grapevine balls. There's no size on here. So let me, um, I'm thinking this is like 80, four inches, and I think this is, I was gonna say 80 millimeters, but here's another size, four inches. Okay, these are four inches. Um, and I'm gonna use some wire. Let me try to get situated here. I'm a little late to the game today, so I feel a little out of sorts. Have you ever had one of those days where technology is just not your friend? Well, I have had one of those weeks where just technology has just been a huge challenge for me. Um, I don't know, something must be off with the planets or something. And it's not like my equipment. I mean, maybe it is. It's usually user error is what I'm talking about, right? We've all been there, haven't we? Okay, now I'm trying to feed the wire through the grapevine. There it goes. Just like this. So this is a piece of wire and I'm feeding it through the grapevine. You guys ask me any questions. Um, yes. I, Bill and Lisa. <laughs> I couldn't see that name. I am in my garage today. Last night I was in my dining room. The day before that I was on my front porch. And tonight I am in my garage, AKA the rate shop. This is where all the magic happens, you guys. Hi, Miss Debbie, welcome. Oh yeah, Christina's saying she's got some of these. She's gonna do her windows tomorrow. That's cool, and you could do any color. But these, this happens to match the theme that I have already, the wreath and the garland on my door. Um, so this is um, why I chose this, you know, this style. You could obviously do um, lime, green, and red, or red and white, or whatever your color theme is. Um, so now you see how I just wired the ornament onto the center of the swag. And now what I'm gonna do is fill in with some of these, um, they're magnolia leaves. I love these magnolia leaves. I'm telling you, if I could afford it, I would have been buying a ton more. These are gonna look amazing in a winter wreath, okay? So these are gonna look great. I got these at Sims Pottery. And don't you know it, before I made this Facebook Live, I ordered me a bunch, because I didn't want them selling out. All right, so um, but this is a bush, and um, I'm gonna cut the cut one of these off, and I'm gonna show you. But they had it in a garland, they had them in like long picks, and and the bush. I'm telling you, whenever you buy, purchase your silk flowers, use a bush, purchase in a bush, because you always get more um, for your money when you do that. All right, but if you look at these. Don't these look, I mean, they just feel real even. So if you look at them, they look real. Turn around the back, you guys. Isn't that awesome? Don't you just love the brown on the back of magnolia leaves? I just, I don't know, I just love that. Yes, I'm the only one that gets excited about magnolia leaves. So I'm just going to cut these off. I'm just gonna cut all of them off because I know I'm gonna need all of these. I've got 10 to do from the front of my house. How many windows do y'all have on the front of your house? Let's see. Oh, okay, the backdrop, Gladys. I was trying to figure out what you guys were talking about. The backdrop, now that you asked about it, um, is I put the backdrop off hoping you guys can see it because sometimes you guys were complaining that um, you couldn't see the details. So I'm hoping that now that I have this um, backdrop, you can see more of the details, I'm hoping. Um, and 
it's I put it up there for um, I'm going to be doing more videos more Facebook live videos more videos for my um, wreath making of the month club and so I put that up there just so that we could see more you know detail of the wreath or whatever I'm working on yay Deb saying it's much easier to see so glad so glad so glad all right so these uh, what I've done is I've cut them off the bush and there were three leaves on them and I cut one leaf off okay because I didn't want it I want it to be long and skinny and this is what I'm going to put on the ends so I put some hot glue down and I'm going to put them on the ends just lay it in there put this on the end and try not to get burned so this is what I have right here just like that so one down here and one up here and then with the extra leaves that I had I'm going to pick one side to be the front of the swag so right down here and I'm just going to place these like underneath the um, ornament So I've placed them right there. So this is how the it's going to be on the window like this. So I'll put those on the front. And then I'm just going to take one and put it on the brown side. I'm just going to pick some place and just put that there. So I've got at least one color showing on the brown. Isn't that pretty? Don't you guys like it? It looks really like a, um, a real magnolia leaf, doesn't it? Uh, Missy, I purchased these at Sims. Sims Pottery. Tracy, welcome. If you missed the beginning, we're just making um, these windowsill swags to go in the front of my window. And I've started with a 30-inch swag. And it's just a straight... I'll show you on the next one. I'm going to do another one. And um, it's just a straight evergreen. And now what I'm going to put in is this. Um, what is this? I think all of the stuff, you guys, is from Sims today. I try not to do everything from one location. <laughs> all right, so this one is cedar. And it's plastic. And I know everybody is thinking, plastic? But let me just say, plastic has come a long way when it comes to silk flowers. When you look at this, it looks real. Let me see if I can let you see a, um, look, except for this part right here where there's clearly a malfunction on the machine when they made it. So let me show you, let me fluff it up and show you. Remember I said to get the bush I should make sure you use a soap bush. But isn't this, I mean, you could just, can you just tell? I mean, it looks real, it feels real. Doesn't have the sap, thank heavens. And I'm just going to cut all of these off. And some of these um, branches are small and some are long. Hey, Cam, are you gonna try this for your windows? That'd be cool. Hey, you guys, when you do this for your own windows, Make sure you share it with me. I want to see what you put together. I want to see what your color theme is. Um, how many windows do you have on the front? So I'm just trimming all these off there all right and then I have some boxwood I love this this is boxwood 
again from Sims Pottery. They should totally be paying me to do this. It feels like a commercial, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, and this doesn't necessarily look as real, but it's gonna put in a lot of, uh, sorry, my dog's going crazy. You see right here, it's dark green and um, a lot of leaves on it. So I love the color of the green. Um, whenever you use the same color on an item, like I'm using a lot of greens, but they're different textures. You know, you've got one that's, it's just like a soft feel and look, and then you've got one that's, you know, spiky, and then you've got another one that's, you know, got the brown and the green. So you just, you could see just like holding these together, even though they're all one color, monochromatic, they're different textures. So that's how, that's why they go really well together. I love that look. All right, so now that I've got everything put together, I'm going to bring in the berries. Where are my berries? I have a whole box of them somewhere. And then I've got these really pretty, they're called um, wild berries, but they're all one color, all red. I'm gonna show this to you. What kind of snips? Are those pliers? I mean, um, wire cutters? Is that what a snips are? Wire cutters? Green Lee. These are Green Lee, and you can find them in the electrical department of your home, um, home goods store or they're on Amazon. But um, here are the berries. So I just love these, these look real. All right, so now let's get started with the, uh, now that we've got all everything pretty much prepped, let's get started with the designing. So we've got our magnolia leaves, we've, we've attached the ribbon, and I'll do another one if you guys missed the first one. But we attach the ribbon and we have the ornament and we have the magnolia. And now what I wanna do is attach some of this cedar. So I'm just going to start um, hot gluing here and there, no rhyme or reason, no pattern whatsoever, just back and forth to try to give it some texture. And um, I'm not gonna worry too much about it because it's gonna be, listen, it's gonna be on the second floor of my house. Nobody but me is going to see the exact details of this thing. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Okay, so this is how it looks with, I've added the cedar in. So here's some right here, and I've got one down here, and I've got one here and one here, and one here. And you see there's just no rhyme or reason. I've just started placing them evenly spaced. And now I'm going to put the um, boxwood in. Hi, Lupe. Girl, I haven't seen you on here in a while. How have you been? Are you getting ready for Christmas? Welcome to the wreath shop. I use, Donna, I use a high temperature glue gun. So I have to be careful not to burn myself. <laughs> yes, high temperature glue gun is what works the best for me. Um, it, it really does, uh, to me, I, I have a better, um, because I ship my items, you know, um, I just do, it does better when I use the high temperature glue gun versus a pan glue. The pan glue doesn't tend to hold as well. Um, I don't know if it's the shipping or the temperature or what, um, but I, I just, um, I like the high temperature glue gun. All right, so I've added some boxwood here and one right here and one right here and one right here. And can you see the difference in the texture yet? Um, it's starting to give like a luxurious, you know, look. I'm gonna show you the one so here's one, you can see the difference. So this is one that we've not done yet, and here's one. 
you could just see the difference on the texture of the greenery, how it's, um, you know, all the different layers and the different textures. And that is what is going to, um, when you start doing a little bit more also three dimensional, having it come out a little bit, it's going to um, give that designer look that we all love. All right, so these are the berries, and I'm going to split these up because if I just put one in here, it's gonna just be too clumpy. I'm going to cut these off, and I'm gonna to try to find a place that will be an even disbursement of the berries. <clears throat> Tammy's loving it. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the group or the page. I forgot I'm in the page today. <clears throat> so, you know, I was talking to you about my technology woes today. So, um, we got a new, I got a new camera for the, for the business for my rethinking of the month club because I wanted it to be clear and I wanted to make sure people could hear me. So that I could hook up, you know, a cordless microphone and have all my hands and using it and everything. And it went well. I mean, the video went well. The quality is amazing. It's going to be, I'm just so excited. Um, well, then I go to use the same camera to do a video. I wanted to do a quick video for my wreath of the wreath making of the month club to have, um, just to kind of give them tips on the different wreath. Um, you know, t wreath tips and wreath supplies and wreath tools and <clears throat> just really like, you know, just wreath DIY kind of stuff. Stuff that you, if you're not a wreath maker, you don't think of. Okay, so that was the video I did and um, it was like an hour long. And I take it to the computer to upload it to um, the Facebook group and um, there's no sound like an hour's worth of video and there's no sound. And I was like, what the heck happened? Is this a new camera? What is going on? And of course my husband informed me that since I didn't have the microphone on, the, you know, because I didn't want to, it wasn't that professional. I mean, I didn't need a microphone for the group just to give them tips and stuff like that. Well, but since I forgot to plug, you know, put the microphone on, the camera was not in the right setting whatever that means. So it didn't record sound for any of it. And I was just like, oh, so sick because, um, yeah, that was an hour of my time. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just count. I'll just call it practice. How about that? It was a practice run and I'll have to record it tomorrow. All right. So what I've done is I've added the berries. Hi, Beverly from Mobile, Alabama. Welcome. So I added the berries, so I put one clump here, and I did one clump here, okay? But then I spread it out and put some of the branches behind the loop. So really it looks like there's two, but I just put it in once. And then there's one here, and I've spread it out. And here's one on the end. So this, you guys, is done. This one's done, all right? So I'm gonna do the next one, and you guys who have just joined me can see what I did. So let me put this one out of the way. All right, so I start with an evergreen uh, swag. This is 30 inches long. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Oh, Bethany, thank you so much. Girl, you just made my day. Hi, Misty <laughs> from Tulsa. Welcome. Okay. Starting the next one. So we've got um, our 30 inch evergreen swag. And then I need my ribbon. And I'm going to say it's a yard of ribbon. So I come in about, I don't know, five inches and I pinch it. And then I'm just going to twist it into the needle ties. Okay, to secure it. So you know, you take the needle ties and you just twist it back and forth. And then I'm going to find the center right here and I'm going to put another loop right there all right so 
the hubs brought me in a question that somebody asked that I missed. How do you hang it from the windows? We attached this old ribbon, um, just a, a knotted it around the back of it. So it's just a knot and we're going to open up the windows and close it on top of this. So does that make sense? So we're gonna pull it, you know, pull it tight and then just close the window on top of the ribbon. And it has held before. Um, this is like the third or fourth year I'm using these, these, um, these swags. So that's how you attach it to the window. And then I'm gonna trim off the edge right there. And then I'm going to dovetail at the ends. I fold the ribbon and cut it at an angle and do the same down here. Fold the ribbon and cut it at an angle. And this puts a finished edge um, on the ribbon. Just makes it, you know, polished. So there you have the, the um, ribbon going down the center. Again, it's just about a yard of ribbon. The loops are not huge. And then I'm going to um, attach one of these. They're called rattan, R-A-T-T-A-N, rattan balls. And I'm going to uh, cut some wire off. This is 24 gauge wire. And you can use the paddle wire too. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is feeding in the florist wire into the grapevine ball. And now I'm just going to wire the grapevine ball all the way around the um, to the back of the swag, positioning it in the center. And if, you were, if you're just joining me, welcome. I'm Julie Samaka with Southern Charm Wreaths, and I'm usually making wreaths, but today we're making a windowsill swags. Well, that's tricky to say, windowsill swags, um, to fit on the front of my house for Christmas. This matches my, um, my wreath, my door wreath, and my garland. And I needed something on the windows. And um, I had before lime green and red. And so I took off all of these ornaments right here. All of these ornaments were like on them. It was like a whimsical look. I had a ton of these on there. And that's what I did right before the video. I took all of them off. Of course, I'm gonna save them because you never know what I'll be doing next year, right? I have a feeling this is gonna be my theme for a, a few years because this really is my style. I am definitely the Pottery Barn, Eddie Bauer kind of girl. The plaid, the magnolia leaves. Just love it, love it, love it. Definitely Southern, isn't it? It's a Southern Christmas, you guys. Well, that didn't, that didn't sound right. I should say it's a Southern Christmas, y'all, right? All right, so I've got the two of the magnolia leaves on each end. Um, she, okay, Deb is asking if I would ever use real berries. And um, I would, if I were you, if I were doing something maybe on um, a, a fresh wreath or fresh, um, Anything that I could maybe mist with water. I don't know. I probably don't need to mist it with water, but I would not <laughs> because I don't want the berry mess all over the place. Um, but you could, if, you're, if you've got like a fresh wreath, you could definitely hot glue stems, you know, long stems of the uh, berries. I mean, you know, florists do it. All right, so then I've got two magnolias. So this will be the front. So I've got two magnolia leaves right there, right there, and then one right here that I turned brown, turned around so the brown side could show. And now I'm going to um, put in some of the 
um, cedar, the artificial cedar. Yes, if you're just now, if you're just joining me, I for the first time, just so you know, I typically go live every Thursday around 7:30 Eastern. You can um, remember and try to follow along, and hopefully, I will figure out one day, some some way on Facebook, there's a way that you can schedule out a broadcast. That I started looking into it, and it was a little bit above my um, pay grade. Of knowledge so that didn't last long I'll have to get somebody else to help me figure it out but there is a way that you can schedule your Facebook posts but um, I haven't been able to figure that out yet but so if you if you follow me on the page and then um, on Thursdays I usually um, if I'm gonna go live I will post a photo that says that I'm going live tonight and it's usually gonna be around 7.30 on Thursdays. Um, and then I would love for you guys to join me. And you know, if you would do, the, uh, do me the favor of sharing this video right now while I'm saying it, because um, what that does to me is it, it first of all, it helps, um, it helps my Facebook page a little bit and it will um, let your friends know so that they can find me too. And you guys can like watch together. Won't that be fun? All right, so here is where I put the juniper. Is that what it was? Cedar. Um, right here's one and I put a little piece right here and a little piece right here and a long piece right there and a little piece right there and a little piece right there. So I'm putting the longer pieces on the end um, to help elongate it. And now I'm going to do the boxwood to add some softness. Hi, Susan from Florida. What are you guys up to tonight? So last night, did you did you guys see me last night when I was um, wrapping Christmas presents? Yeah, I went on Facebook Live and I realized hairspray, the live hairspray show was on. And I was like, rats, I wanted to see that. Oh, well. I got a lot of wrapping done. So if you if you didn't see my video yesterday, you can um, click on videos. Not yet. Wait till I'm done here. I don't want to lose you. Wait. Um, and you can click on the videos on my Facebook page, and it'll show the videos. And you'll see one that I did last night where I was wrapping my Christmas presents. And using a bunch of uh, leftover stems that I had from the wreath shop and um, working that into my bows on my Christmas presents. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I had fun. And I got a lot of wrapping done. Uh, Christina enjoyed it apparently because she's saying if you missed it last night, you should go back and watch it. I guess it was helpful then. Christina, should I put that on my blog? I was debating whether or not I should put that one even on my blog. But if you guys think that was helpful, to me it's something I just do all the time every year. Put, you know, berries and stuff on my packages. <clears throat> but I guess a lot of people don't normally do that. Okay, so... Is that Arlene? Arlene, the way I, um, she's saying she likes the way I twirl the glue gun. And the reason I do that is so there's to prevent the strings. If you go like that, there's not going to be a string because the tip of it is burning it off. So there's a tip for you if you didn't know that. You guys, I'm glad you guys are asking questions because these are things that I thought everybody knew. Isn't that funny? Because I can't stand the glue strings. I know I, can I get an amen? Because I'm just serious, seriously. Those glue strings, when you get them on you, they feel like spider webs. I'm just gluing these down. And when you glue, 
first off, don't burn yourself. But you want to um, make sure that you're coming into contact with the evergreen of the base of the swag because that's what's going to stick right there. Come, making sure you um, stick it onto the evergreen part. And one more. And here we go. So this will be the front. Here's a string that I forgot to twirl on. <clears throat> so this will be the front. Let me show you the other one that we just did. So can you imagine, so these are gonna be on the, I'm gonna try to see how far the, so this is gonna be on the windows in the front. Aren't, isn't that pretty? You're gonna put a bunch of like traditional, you know, pop of color on the window. We've got a very traditional house, so I think this will look really, really pretty. Let me know if you guys have any questions. What is the best brand of glue stick to use? Um, I do not. Um, I purchase mine wholesale. There, um, I've purchased some at Hobby Lobby. I like theirs. Theirs seems to be good. Um, you really, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't think you can go wrong with a glue stick. Now, there are going to be some that maybe have a little bit more stringy to them. But if you do the, uh, you know, the twirling technique that I just showed you, I mean, I don't think you're going to. You're not going to notice that huge of a difference to where you feel like you need to like hunt for the perfect glue stick. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Mary Ann wants me to post a picture of them once I have them hung up. I'll I'll get the hubs on that right away <laughs> because he's the one that hangs these up for me. I'm like, if I'm making them, you're hanging them. And that's how it's worked in our house. He does the outside. I do the inside. But also, he takes them down. And that I have to live with. And you probably can guess what it looks like when he takes them down and stores them for a year. They are smashed in the smallest possible box you can imagine. And sometimes they're wet. He doesn't even dry them off yet and just throws them in there. I've had some where the ornaments, you could shake them from the next year and there's still water in them. So, but you know what? I have to live with that because I still would much rather him help out and do it his own way than me have to do it all. I'm sure I'm not the only one <laughs> that agrees to that. You have to pick your battles, right, ladies? All right, so I'm just wiring in another ornament. Yes, Arlene, I use hot temperature glue gun. To clarify, when you sell your lantern swags, is it only the swag we get? Correct, Deb, only the swag. I do not ship the lanterns because of the glass. Um, yeah, that's not, I don't do that. I don't stock the lanterns and I don't ship those. You only get the swag. And if you don't know what a lantern swag is, if you're new to the page, don't worry. I didn't either. Um, until everyone was asking about them and I was like, what are they? <laughs> and I did some research and really they're just little swags, kind of like this on a mini miniature level that you hang on to your lantern and it gives a punch of color of christmas color or whatever season you're in i've done them for easter and halloween and spring um, you can do them to match your home decor you know i've done some that are farm at the farmhouse style and some that are in, um you know some someone sent me a picture of a sofa they have needed one in a, an iced blue and I did that for them 
So that's what a lantern swag is. And if you have, did you guys see my Facebook page? Oh, I forgot. I'm going to do this, the, the cedar first. Um, I posted out there, um, I did a ton of lantern swags for um, a company's Christmas party. And she emailed me yesterday that they, that they loved it. That the whole room, I did the lantern swags and a couple of wreaths, that the whole room was so pretty that even the event manager and staff were taking pictures. I thought that was so funny. That's hilarious. But she was in love with it and it just totally made my day. Um, so she used the lantern swags on lanterns for table um, centerpieces. And then get this, after the event, they got to take them home. The employees got to take the lantern and the lantern swags home. I was like, man, I need to be working for that company. You know, I totally forgot to do, um, I'm talking and I'm getting out of sync. I forgot to do my magnolia leaves. I like to start with the, the um, on the base, I like to start with them, um, the heavier, the larger items first. So the magnolia leaf should have gone on first. It helps me to get centered. Oh yeah, Deb, you saw them on sale from uh, Michaels. Those are exactly the ones that I, exact style that I, um, here's mine, here's one. Is the exact style. It was kind of dirty. Hopefully yours will be clean when you get it. Um, but it's the exact style and they have them in black. I got them in black too. Watch out. And I have them in different sizes so that I can test out the different size swags that a customer might want. And for, you know, taking photos and stuff like that. But they were 50% off, you guys. If you want me to post the link, I'll be happy to after the video. Um, the, what are, Tammy, what's big, the lantern or the swag? I'm not following you on that one. Yes, Phoebe, thanks for joining me. We are using an evergreen base. An evergreen 30 inch swag and it's not a teardrop swag it's just a straight um, it's just in a straight line this is I'm having fun you guys I'm glad you guys came and talked to me to, to and you know keep me on task because sometimes you know at the end of the day the last thing you want to do after doing a bunch of um, you know, stuff for clients and um, your, you know, your sh Etsy shop and stuff. You, you really don't have the energy or the drive to do your own, your own um, swags. Do you know what I mean? You guys, surely I'm not the only one. Sometimes my stuff is the last. Obviously, look here. I'm just now getting around to my windowsill stuff. Um, and I know I'm not the only one. Who, who does theirs last. <laughs> Barbara's eating dinner while she's watching you. What do you eat, Barbara? The hubs made us some, well, I made crock pot um, chicken tacos tonight for dinner, but the hubs finished it off with the, he made the brown rice and the, the black beans and everything. So now I'm putting in the, the box wood. I forgot to show you guys where I was putting everything. I'll do that this time. Probably one more piece of uh, box wood. So um, if you're just joining me, we're making land, uh, we're making, what are we making? Windowsills, uh, swags for the windowsill. And right here is where I added boxwood here, here, and here. And then the magnolia leaves were here, 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 
Here's one that I've turned upside down that's brown. Um, and then the cedar is right here or right here, right here, right there. And then the ornament in the, in the center. And now we're gonna do the berries that we've separated. And if you're new to my page, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you take the time to please like my page um, so that you could start to see notifications of uh, you know my different posts and when I, I'll post photos and notifications of when I'm going live the next time. So I've been, this is my third night in a row that I've gone live. I was, um, I'm in a group that we did a comp, well, not a competition, but it was a challenge. It's, we're trying to build our businesses up on Facebook. So we were entered into a challenge to try to do three solid nights of Facebook, or not nights, but days. And so that's why I have been on Facebook for the past three days. This is all artificial. Our, yeah, Heidi, everything is artificial. It's not, um, I'm not gonna use the real because I want these to last, you know, for every year, not every year, at least for a couple of years. I don't think next year I'll change my mind. But um, now if you were doing real, like a real wreath, you could definitely put real boxwood in it. I made a live wreath um, for my back, my um, shed in the back. I put a, a live wreath out there that I put together with Christmas tree clippings and a straw wreath form and um, just these floral pins. But it turned out really cute, a big red bow. It's real pretty. So here is the, the finished swag. You can see where I've added the berries here, here, here. And on the end and that is it and um, this is how you attach it we just tied a knot in a long piece of ribbon and we're going to open up the windows put them out and shut the window on this um, piece of ribbon and pull it tight and it'll it'll hold there it'll hold just good I think that's good right there all right that's good so let's see, how many do I have? I have, okay, I have like five more. I wasn't planning on doing all of them on, on a Facebook Live. I figured you guys would probably get sick of it. So let me know if you have any questions. Yep, Lois is busy with her wreath orders. She hasn't even decorated her own tree, bless your heart. Um, I have to say that I was not um, very thrilled to, to decorate my tree. We do two trees, and um, the day I told Caitlin that, or Miss K, I call her Miss K here on the Facebook page, um, and I call her Miss K and when I'm playing around with her too, so that's how we arranged, that's how I came up with the name. But um, when I told her that I was just didn't have it in me, to do two trees and we're rushed on time and I've got a lot going on with my work and let's just do, you know, the family tree. Let's not do all of the knickknacks and Santas and fairies and everything. Let's just keep it low key. And she was like, who are you? And what did you do with my mother? <laughs> she was like, uh, something is wrong with you if you're not wanting to decorate for Christmas because she knows how much I love to decorate for Christmas. Now I'm going to have to get creative and really think about what am I going to do Facebook Lives on? You know, when you're decorating for Christmas, there's so many options. So what, okay, so the next thing coming up would be what, you guys? Mardi Gras. Does anybody here celebrate Mardi Gras and should I do anything Mardi Gras? related tell me right now if you guys want me to start planning some mardi gras stuff because 
I love decorate, even though we don't really celebrate it here in Columbia, South Carolina. I love, love, love making Mardi Gras stuff. It is a fun color. It's so vibrant. Yeah, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn, they gave she gave me total guilt trip. I was like, fine, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. So I'm going to I put a piece of wire into the it's a um, a grapevine ball, and it's four inches. If you didn't join, if you didn't hear at the beginning, it's a four and a half. Did I say four? No, four inch wide um grapevine ball orb or whatever you want to call it and so we put that on there and now i'm going to do the magnolia leaves that we've cut off the bush at the beginning of the segment so i usually do a stem of, of two on the ends to help give it, you know, some long, it elongates it and gives it some shape on the ends. Oh, Gladys is saying St. Patrick's. I should do some St. Patrick's stuff. Donna's saying Valentine's. So nobody on here tonight celebrates the Mardi Gras stuff? Oh, Tammy's already thinking about spring projects. Girl, let's get through Christmas. You're putting some pressure on me now. Valentine's Day, Mardi Gras, Easter, spring. All right, so Lois. Okay, so you have taught me so much through the last two years of following you. Ah, oh, I'm blushing, girl. Can you take a minute and explain your memberships and what you cover in them? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. So my Wreath of the Month Club, it's a new membership. I just started it this month, and I'm teaching how to make this wreath right here. Do you see the, um, the it's a Williamsburg-style wreath with all of the fruit and the big bow and it's got some grapevine roping and some seed pods um but every on the beginning of the month i'm gonna try to do it on the first week of the month although i told you i was having technology issues today and it didn't get uploaded like i wanted um but at the beginning of the month you're going to get a video exactly how i made the um the wreath that i'm making for that month so you, you'll get instructions on how to make this wreath and you can download the video or the uh, download the supply list and I'll tell you where I've purchased my supplies. And even though some of them might be wholesale, I try to give you suggestions on, you know, retail places that you can go to. But I'm teaching you the basic techniques. I'm teaching you, like I'm doing right here, why am I choosing, um, you know, certain textures, why am I, um, you know, cer certain colors? Why do I wire it on versus hot glue? All of that is covered in my wreath making of the month club. And you can get more information on that by going to southerncharmwreaths.com forward slash blog forward slash shop. I know that's a long um, link and I will post that on in, he in the group or I'll post that on here when we are done. So you can kind of look at read more about it but I'm teaching you everything you need to know to make a designer wreath okay I'm teaching you what um, you know the the wreath that I'm teaching you to make could sell for um, a pricey penny or you could keep it for your own door and your neighbors would will be totally envious <laughs> wonder where you bought it and then you can tell them you made it won't that be fun won't that be fun 
So at the beginning of the month, yeah, I post a video on how to make the wreath with the supply list. And then, um, then the next week you get to ask your questions and I'll answer them probably in another video because it'll just be easier. Sometimes people ask questions and it's easier just to show you than try to type it out. So I'll probably answer the questions in another video. And then um, there's going to be bonus material in that where you get to, um, you know, if I've got a project that I'm working on, um, like a couple of custom orders, I'll turn on the camera and you guys can um, like this Facebook Live, you can just kind of watch me make a wreath for that customer. Um, and I'll give you tips and stuff like that. So it's just a, a community of where I'm teaching um, more, I guess, one on one. But it's it's a group. I think we've got we've got about 200 in there now or 200 people. There's been 200 people that need to a couple people still haven't joined, but they're 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 signed up so it's um it's a nice little um community of learning all about wreath making and the best part is you get to watch it from your own home in your pjs you don't have to go to like a michael store or a hobby lobby store and learn it you get to watch it right from home and i give you the video to keep forever all right, so you don't think you have, you're only going to, you know, have access to it for a month. So the month that you're in the group, the, that's the month you get the video and you get to keep it forever. I hope that answers your questions. Sandra's going to be starting her Mardi Gras wreaths and Valentine's wreaths right after or right before Christmas. That's right, girl. I'm going to be doing some winter wreaths. Um, that to me, the majority of the people have a hard time with. Customers are always asking me, what can I put on the door to um, you know, take me into spring? So if you guys are selling wreaths, I suggest you start putting some of those winter wreaths out there and people will eat them up. All right, so let me see where are my berries. Let's see, any questions? The group, okay, the group is um, $27 a month. However, I'm running a special for the month of December. If you join in, um, you can get it for 19. For, there's a coupon code if you go to the I'll give you the link after the video so make sure you look for that and you can use a coup a link called wreath love and you could get it for $19 a month okay it's a monthly membership so your card will be charged every month until you cancel you can cancel at any time but as, whenever you opt in at the 19 option the $19 option Every month from there after will be $19. If you opt in at the $27, it'll be $27. So now I've separated my berries and I'm going to attach these on the ends. And you guys make sure to remember to join my mailing list. I've got to um, send out an email. I've got one scheduled to go out in the morning telling you about a recipe that I've put on the blog as well as videos that you might have missed of me um, like showing you my porch lantern I'm not what do you call it, those porch urns how I decorate them for Christmas and then I have another video on how I decorated a tool caddy for a Christmas centerpiece it was a table centerpiece, and it was, you know, one of those old-fashioned toolboxes with the handle, and they're long. So we decorated, um, I decorated one for Christmas, and that's on the blog. But if you join my mailing list, you, I'll, you won't miss anything because I'll, I'll email it to you. Go to southerncharmreads.com forward slash blog and you can join the mailing list that way. 
Oh, thank you guys for sharing. Thanks for sharing the video. That really means a lot to me. I'm trying to see if you have any other questions. Oh, thank you, Christina. Girl, you're rocking it. Christina's put the link on there for me. You're so blessed. Oh, thank you so much. Christina, thank you so, so much. That means a lot. Okay, so we have got this done. I'm so, um, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I had a really good time, and um, I have to say it wasn't the you know a great start to the day because of all of the technology issues, but I, I want you to know that I had so much fun on here with you guys tonight. It really, um, I do, do enjoy it. And if you could do me a favor of please sharing it so that number one, it puts it on your news feed so you can find it quickly later when you want to refer back to it. But also it lets your friends know about me and find me. And so it'll be fun for you to interact for the next Facebook Live with your friends on here. And my next Facebook Live, um, unless something um, I, I'll probably do a quick something in between, but the next like full tutorial will be next Thursday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So put it on your calendars now and mark it down to join me again next Thursday at 7.30. And make sure to join my mailing list, southerncharmraise.com forward slash blog. And thanks, you guys. And I hope you have an awesome evening.